for example if i say uh, after few days there comes two three holidays together what does it mean exactly after few days means what after two days three days four days what exactly does it mean so as a listener someone has to paraphrase it that do i mean this this is what i have understood i mean what the speaker wanted to convey and what the listener what the receiver is uh, understanding out of it should remain the same that is that is the purpose that is the point so paraphrasing helps you to cross check to verify uh, to to make it sure that this is what i have understood and this is what you wanted to uh, convey is it the same have i understood it properly have i understood it in the in the right direction that is the purpose of paraphrasing and that is a very good characteristic of uh, being a good listener fine let us move ahead with the next characteristic that is reflecting implications see while you are listening uh, you have to reflect upon it i mean you are receiving you are understanding or not whatever so you have to show your own implications into uh, uh, into your listening process right while you are listening reflecting hidden feelings that means you know uh, here i can say two things reflecting hidden feelings that means whatever you are understanding uh, definitely you have to disclose your feelings for that part of understanding or we can say that part of the topic what you have exactly understood but in other case you can always say that you should not even disclose right you should not disclose uh, certain other hidden feelings that you do have within yourself while you are listening if i am biased if i am prejudiced and i am listening to someone uh, where exactly i am trying to implement my own bias and prejudice then that's not a sign of a good listener this is what i mean fine so you have to keep these things in your mind let us move ahead with the next characteristic that is inviting for the contributions and responding non verbally you have to encourage your speaker right showing your uh, uh, involvement showing your uh, we can say uh, response responses right it can be obviously non verbal response while you are listening to someone you should not interrupt the speaker now and then very often while while one is speaking something so that is again a good characteristic of becoming a good listener or being a good listener so you have to respond non verbally for example your teacher is teaching and you are attending the session you are attending the class the way you are making expressions on your face right it it reflects whether you have understood the topic or not the way you are nodding your head to someone's message it reflects if it is this it is yes if it is this it is no that means the way you are reflecting you are responding non verbally through your body language through through certain signs and symbols and all that movement of your body parts and all that that is called responding non verbally to the speaker and through this you are encouraging your speaker you must do this right being a good listener you have to stay tuned with the speaker that is uh, very much required let us move ahead uh there are two different terms that is called active and passive listening what exactly it is we must be aware of it when it comes to active listening uh your 100% attention is being paid to something that you are listening to and when it comes to passive listening that means not the 100% but a bit of your attention is already uh, you know given to or paid to something else simultaneously that is called passive listening while you are uh, watching television and doing nothing else simultaneously that is your active listening to the television program but while you are taking your meals and you are you know on the other hand television is on radio is on and you are paying bit of your attention to that particular thing also that becomes passive listening because your primary attention is given to your meals your food your lunch or dinner right but at the same time television is on radio is on or maybe someone is uh, speaking to you then it becomes passive listening so this is the difference so show keenness involve your expressions be alert raise certain questions in your mind 
especially when it comes to speaker's presentation or speech, uh, you should always keep your questions in your mind and at the end of the session or I mean whenever uh, you are getting a chance or we can say the, the proper time to raise your questions, only then and then you should raise your questions, you should raise your doubts. Otherwise, you keep your questions in your mind. Not neglecting physical aspects and valid reason for criticism. See, these are certain characteristics or we can say certain tips as well, right? Uh, you must be having a valid reason if you are criticizing something or somebody rather, right? So, as a, as a good listener, you have to uh, uh, I mean, being a listener, it does not uh, become your uh, fundamental right to criticize anyone. You must be having a valid reason. And those who are good listeners, they always take care of this. Unless and until you have a valid reason, never try to criticize speech or the speaker. Fine. Let us move ahead. Good listening helps you. To take better decisions and make better policies in an organization. See how it helps. If you are a good listener, if you are practicing it in a proper way, uh, if you are ready to listen to others, definitely at your workplace, it would help you to make better decisions and it would even uh, try to, it would even help you to create better rapport with all your colleagues. Right? And it would uh, help you to uh, make better policy designs at your workplace, at your organization. On the contrary, lack of proper listening can lead to embarrassing situations because of a gap in coordination and understanding. Fine. So, these are the two sides. If you are good at listening, fine. Things are positive. Things are happening in a nice way. Uh, I mean, in, in favor of yours. If you are not a good listener, then it may lead you to something what we can say you know lack of coordination lack of understanding or even some bigger disasters than this right so that is uh, these are the these are some implications of listening habits or listening skills let us have a look on few tips for effective listening do's and don'ts for effective listening so far as do's are concerned we must say be mentally prepared to listen. Fine. You should not get distracted to something. While you are listening to the speaker, while you are listening to uh, uh, some messages, get ready mentally. Right? It is very much possible that physically you are present in the classroom, but you are not paying much attention to your teacher. That means mentally you are absent. So, you are not Mentally, you are not prepared to listen and due to that, there remains a kind of gap of understanding. Your teacher assumes that he has done his job and uh, he has delivered the talk, he has taught some topics, but ultimately, uh, uh, there is something which was missing on the part of listener. Due to this, listener has not received it fully. So, be mentally prepared to listen something. Uh, evaluate the speech, not the speaker. As I said earlier, even. Right? Never try to evaluate the speaker, what kind of attires uh, the speaker uh, is dressed up in, what, what kind of uh, movements the speaker is making or I mean the way how the one is saying something. Uh, never try to evaluate the speaker. Better you focus on the speech part, the content part, the message part that you are listening to, you must be listening to. Be unbiased to the speaker by depersonalizing your feelings. See depersonalizing of your own feelings while you are listening to it it is it is a bit difficult thing but being a good listener you need to do that you must possess the ability you must possess the quality of being depersonalized uh, while you are listening to someone because otherwise uh, what happens if you are becoming you know or if you are taking certain things uh, in a very personal context or personal perspectives, then you are trying to implement your own bias, your, your own uh, uh, feelings and impressions into that. And due to this, perhaps it may mislead, it may misguide your interpretations, your understanding, what exactly was expected through that listening or through that speech of the speaker. Uh, I don't think we will be able to uh, fulfill the purpose in that case. So, always be unbiased and depersonalized while you are listening. Fight distractions by closing off sound sources. 
C. Uh, let us take an example here. If a classroom session is going on and there are a few late comers. So, late comers are always, you know, distractions for others and for the teachers as well. So, never get distracted to this kind of happenings. I mean, uh, this is just an example as I said, ke late comers ka aana jana, theek hai. Lekin, always stay focused on your own listening uh, uh, aims, on your listening objectives and try to uh, involve yourself uh, with the topic, with the message and try to grasp the essence of what you are listening to. So, never get distracted. Fine. The next is, uh, be open-minded. Ask questions to clarify and not to overshadow intelligence. As I said earlier that if you are having certain doubts and certain questions in your mind, don't raise your questions while the speaker is speaking. Let him finish and then put up your queries, put up your questions. Right. So, be open-minded. You should not disturb the speaker uh, very often in between. And uh, whenever you are asking or putting up your doubts, queries and questions to the speaker, be sure that you are not at all trying to overshadow your intelligence. Right. And you are just trying to clarify or you are just trying to uh, uh, make it uh, easier to understand, right? So, never try to overshadow or never try to highlight that you are knowing something much more than what the speaker is talking about. Uh, that is a wrong practice. That is not a good sign of a, a good listener. Paraphrase from time to time. Cross-check, verify time to time. That means whenever you get a chance to paraphrase, whenever it is required to paraphrase, whenever it is required to verify and cross-check whether the message is uh, uh, the same, what exactly the speaker wanted to convey and what exactly you have received on your part, you need to paraphrase. Send appropriate non-verbal signals time to time. See, here time to time, that particular part of the uh, line is very important because time to time that means uh, whenever or wherever it is required, you should provide certain non-verbal signals to the speaker. Unnecessarily, you should not keep sending all your uh, useless and unnecessary non-verbal signals to the, to the speaker. So, be aware of this. After talking about do's, let us have a look on certain don'ts, things which you should always avoid, things which you need to uh, uh, keep in your mind and you should not do these, these many things while you are listening. Not to pay undue emphasis on vocabulary as you can use the context to understand the meaning. See, recently, uh, if I'm not wrong, it, there was a survey in Oxford University and it was a, in fact, it was a, a survey based on some written text that people do not pay much attention to the correct spellings, right? Uh, this is what I am talking about uh, perhaps on the grounds of or on the basis of certain written exercises and all that. But here the similar thing we can implement here that people do not pay much attention to your vocabulary, right? And the outcome of that survey which was as I said uh, uh, done in some foreign university, the outcome of this survey was people do not pay much attention to the, the spellings in the written text and they tried uh, to find out one thing through. Uh, a very very experimental text they what they did is they just kept first and the last letter of the spelling correctly and in between i mean between the first and the last letters of the spelling they uh, changed the uh, letters here and there and even in that case people could read it uh, completely people could understand it correctly and it indicates that they are not much concerned about the correct spellings so, in the same way, while you are listening, don't pay much attention to the vocabulary that is being used about the uh, sorry by the speaker, and you can always use the context to understand the meaning. Now, what does it mean? Context means what here? Uh, for example, if you are reading a textbook and uh, you are reading some 10-15 sentences, out of these 10-15 sentences, or maybe we can say 50-60 words, uh, if you are not aware of the meaning of some one or two words in that text then how would you try to understand that the very first thing that we never do is we never stand up and take up uh, the dictionary and we have a look in the dictionary to find out the meaning never we never generally we never do that in that case what we do is on the basis of some other words which you are already aware of which you are already familiar with and uh, for which you 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 know the meaning 
on the basis of those meanings of other words which you are aware of you would try to estimate the meaning of the word which you are not aware of that is called context so even in the listening exercise you should always be focused on the context to understand the meaning of the message or meaning of certain uh, words which are being used by the speaker and most of the times you would get success to find out the correct meaning out of um, this i mean on the basis of the context that you are listening to not to pay too much attention to the accessories and clothing of the speaker a uh, very simple to understand no need to elaborate this you must not be getting distracted to the speaker's attires or accessories or something like this right or not even the surrounding atmosphere the surrounding uh, uh, objects not to prepare your responses while the speaker is speaking fine if you have to respond to the speaker wait for your turn let the speakers finish and then you can move ahead with all your responses with all your queries and your feedback then uh, avoid uh, preconceptions and prejudice not to get distracted by outside influences not to interrupt too often and not to show boredom see uh, in one on another way uh, we have already talked about certain things like prejudice and biases and all this and uh, you have to uh, you know you have to try to remove the outside influences in your process of listening and you should not interrupt the speaker too often during his speech and never uh, show your boredom because otherwise it discourages your speaker earlier as i said that you have to encourage your speaker through your positive feedback through i mean through your positive non verbal responses and all that and you should never show your boredom so these are some simple do's and don'ts these are some simple tips that you need to keep in your mind now how to improve your listening skills as i said listen to radio watch english tv channel watch english movies use internet listening resources here i would like to uh, share a beautiful story of a very young boy uh who belonged to a uh, a very rural area uh, exactly i forgot the name of the village but few years back it was a uh, it was a grand story in uh, most of the news channels a very